Hello. Can you hit hello everyone and welcome to the WTF1 Grand Prix here from Buckmore Park. I'm Matthew Gallagher and joining me is my man Kelvin van der Linde, Nürburgring 24 hour winner. How are you doing, dude? I'm well and you? I'm very, very well. I cannot wait. The qual qualifying is underway right now. You'll see the action very shortly as the race, I think, gets underway in about 10, 15 minutes' time. As you can see, we're both taking part as well. What does it mean, Kelvin, to be part of this inaugural WTF1 event here at Buckmore? Well, uh, it's obviously the, one of the biggest races of the year. A lot of manufacturer involvement, and uh, you know that's why I had to fly all the way from Germany to come do this race. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here with you on a team. I think we're going we're gonna to ace it. You're making me blush. You're probably wondering what the race format is like. So we have 60 minutes of racing coming up. So it's going to be 20 minute stints for us. Uh, Lando Norris is the other man joining us. McLaren F1 reserve driver. Probably going to be in Formula 1 quite soon, isn't he? Wink. Um, but yeah, it should be really, really good. We've got quite a good team, although I don't think we're doing too well in qualifying right now. Yeah, I don't know if it's our race suit. It's a bit too big. We're making too much drag out there. I don't know what it is. We've got to look some data, Matt. <laughs> Weight reduction, we definitely need it. So it's actually 12 turns, a 1,000 metres of racetrack, one straight. Do you see, Kelvin, any overtaking opportunities out there for us a little bit later? Because it looks like from qualifying at the moment, we'll need to do some overtaking. Uh, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of chaos going out of there, so we need to really get creative. <laughs> I think with the traffic out there, some cars spinning around. So, you know, we're going to try some different lines and see what works best. Yes, and you'll be able to follow all of that with our commentator, Andrew Mather, who will be on the comms, won't you, Andrew? I will be indeed. It's uh, great to be here. Thank you for having me along. It's going to be absolutely awesome. It's not raining as well, which is so good because karting can be very, very difficult in the wet, as I'm sure you have, you're aware because you're a racing driver. Yeah, but I haven't driven at Buckmore Park in the wet yet. Excuses. <laughs> <laughs> Should get interesting. I love how the minute you walked in, it was, uh, yeah. Are we, are we not that, we're not quick, are we? We're not quick at all. It's definitely the overalls, definitely the weight reduction well, that we definitely... I was, I was definitely trying, so... <laughs> so was I. There's massive, massive skill comparisons out there. You know, there's people out here that are but more all the time, you know, smashing out laps week in, week out. You've got other people that I nearly rammed into the back of very hard because it's their first time. But that's nice because here at WTF1, we allow everyone to be part of this event and I and actually look at that we can see some uh, action right now it's quite an interesting track as well obviously this is your first time here what have you noticed about the, the undulations and stuff that's going on yeah well it's cool because it like you say it's going up it's going down um there's lots of wow <laughs> <laughs> that was a Kimi Raikkonen comment <laughs> no but it's it's quite a lot of fun um maybe if I get a bit fast I'll enjoy it a bit more but uh, for now it's still learning the track and getting up to speed that competitive spirit coming out right now I think it's about time I think qualifying is about to end so let's hand over to Andrew Mather and all of the racing action we're going to see unfold thank you Matt thank you uh, for that wonderful intro and uh, yes qualifying is coming to an end uh, very, very tight up at the front. Good to see always with arriving drive karting. The equal machinery producing some fascinating uh, results in terms of qualifying. So we've got four minutes to go. Limitless racing currently on pole position with a 49.329. P&O Ferries uh, are second, half a second behind. And uh, JDR, Jack, De uh, Jack Dex Racing, minute 24, are third. Uh, but as, uh, as we've mentioned already, a big field, 35 carts, it's a long race, one hour, and uh, yes, qualifying is important, but there's time there to be able to pull your way back through the grid if you don't have such a good qualifying. Conditions are perfect, I'd say. Uh, we're in the low 20s, it's dry, it's not too hot. It's a very physical circuit, this at Butmore Park, especially with the, uh, the undulation changes, some fast speed corners, and some pretty big curbs around the circuit as well that... Uh, can really give your less experienced drivers a bit of a hard time. So the fact that it's not too hot, that it's uh, not 28 degrees as it has been the last couple of uh, couple of weeks, I think is good for everybody. There was a little bit of a worry yesterday with the heavy rain that we're going to have wet conditions today, uh, which would have made things very, very tricky for the drivers. But that's not the case. Glad to report. Very green track out there, though. So um, I reckon we're going to see the track developed with so many carts out there, has say 35 carts out on track today. It's going to rubber in fairly quickly, and we're going to get some quick times in, especially towards the latter stage of the race as the fuel starts to go down. You can interact with us on the stream as well. We're on Facebook and on YouTube today. So, uh, 
do put your comments into us on the stream below. I can see there's a lot of you already uh, watching. It's great to have you with us. So two minutes of the qualifying session to go. Just to go through the Limitless Racing team, James Doherty and Jack Goldsmith racing for them. Jack's a very quick driver as well. Jack's a driver that I've uh, had the pleasure of racing against from time to time as well. I say racing, more just sharing the same piece of tarmac as he comes flying by. But uh, he's out there. I can see a comment saying, where is Lando? Lando, I think, is actually out on track right now um, going round. Great to have him here. So the number 21 comes out of the pit lane. That's in a 4Q racing. Who've just done a driver change. Maybe they're trying to put a fast driver in for the last couple of minutes in this qualifying session. We've got the timing board on the left hand side. That's going to help us all. So, as I say, Limitless Racing still your pole position uh, holders at the moment on a 49.329. Half a second clear still of PO Ferries. So, carts coming over the line now will be, well, we'll get one more lap in and possibly another one as well. So Lando Norris fly through in the number 17, so two carts from WTF1 we want to look out for, number 17 and 18. There's the number 27, and it is indeed Jack Goldsmith currently at the wheel of that cart. Thirty-four seconds to go then in the qualifying session. So all of these carts coming across the line now will get one more lap. Andrew Calder goes there in number three. The Subby one team. Can anybody beat the forty-nine point three two nine of Limitless Racing? At the moment, doesn't look like so. It looks like They've done enough to get pole position, but there are a lot of fast drivers. There goes Landon Norris across the line. He's going to start another lap. That was perfectly timed. Ed Bars starts another lap as well in the number 11. We know how quick he is round this circuit and across the line. So checkered flag is out. Limitless Racing have done a 49.597 to finish their qualifying session. So not quicker, but consistent pace there for the number 27. Should serve them very, very well. Uh, P&O Ferry still there in second place. Uh, Ultima, the number 15, have just popped up to fourth place late on there. Will anybody else be able to beat that time? And uh, I think a top 10 position would be good for any of these teams. Number 15 comes across the line. That is indeed Ultima, so they can't improve. But consistent pace yet again. Across the line there comes the number 8 and the 17. Oh, great last lap there by Lando Norris. Right at the end of the qualifying session, fifth place. And it's a 50.222, so it's right up there. And that will make uh, Matt's team very, very happy that they are up at the front end of the grid. So that's the qualifying session done. Limitless Racing are indeed your pole position winners. The number 27 cart with a 49.329, which is uh, only two tenths of a second, or less than two tenths of a second, of the lap record round here. So that's a very impressive lap time indeed. P&O Ferry second, JDR third, Ultima fourth, WTF1, uh, the one team, so that of the two teams, that's the first team, uh, that's Matty's team, fifth, right at the end there, and then the rest of the field. Let's tell you a, a little bit about this circuit then whilst we've got a bit of a break in proceedings, whilst the grid gets formed for this one hour endurance race. Bookmore Park, uh, founded and built in 1963 and uh, was of course purchased by the late great John Surtees in April 2015 and uh, a circuit that's gone a lot of changes in terms of its infrastructure. You'll see all the Tech Pro barriers, it's a really good looking circuit um, these days, always has been. But the bit that hasn't changed that much in say the last 20 years or so is the track layout. It's a real favorite amongst the drivers. Uh, one kilometre circuit, 12 corners. Uh, recent developments have seen this brand new fleet of state of the art Sodi RT8 carts. Those are the ones that we are driving today. Uh, be bought by the circuit. You can come down here and race them if you want. And I very much recommend that you do, because uh, they are really, this is one of the best fleets of hire carts in the country, if you ask me. 
Um, forging ahead as well with a new advanced e -light, uh, e flag lighting system installed this summer. There is the 27 car that is now on pole position. And really the, uh, the vision of John Surtees is to make Bookmore Park one of the most technolo uh, technologically advanced circuits in the world is definitely coming to the fore. Matt's going to join me on the commentary for a little bit. He pulled it out the bag for you, didn't he? Right at the end, Mr. Norris. Yeah, he did. I'm, I'm glad he did because uh, he's a McLaren Formula 1 reserve driver, so yeah. I hope <laughs> that uh, with the team we'd fielded, we could get uh, a little bit higher up the field. But uh, still 1.1 off the pace. Uh, but Lando has uh, been on social media quite quite vocally saying that this is only second time being at Buckmore. So really? Yeah, he's only been here one other time. Oh, see, I just assumed yeah. that he must have been around here quite a few times. Um, it's a regular circuit on the MSA and Super 1 calendar, um, quite famously. Well, I mean, we are stood in the John Button suite, as we uh, commentate. Jensen raced down here a lot in his younger years. Lewis Hamilton as well, of course. Um, and I always remember, back when, back when I was a lad, I don't think I can consider myself a lad anymore, I'm too <laughs> old, um, reading copies of, uh, of magazines and seeing adverts for Bookmore Park in like, the back pages, and it was always Johnny Herbert. Yeah. who was the, the face of Bookmore Park back then. I noticed that as well. There's a lot of Johnny Herbert, which is, which is good. He was, he was a great driver. He was his, indeed. To his accident, unfortunately. Uh, Lando just got out of the cart, which I'm slightly concerned about. I hope he's not going to come all the way back here because he is starting the race for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, we've just got an empty cart on the grid. But uh, it's an awesome event. I'm, I'm absolutely chuffed that this is happening. A WTF1 event, and we didn't really know how it would go down with the fans. Mm. And to see 105 drivers and 35 teams sell out within two, two days was yeah. absolutely mental and I think <laughs> with 35 carts on the on the grid it could be an interesting first two laps I think it could be a very interesting first two laps especially down into those two hairpins uh, which if you ask me are the, are the best chances to overtake around this Bookmore circuit especially hairpin two the entry to it's so wide you can very very easily do a block pass but as you say first couple of laps everyone charging in everyone trying to get themselves further up the water if they've, say, started in the middle of the pack. It's going to produce a very, very interesting first couple of laps. I imagine that with Lando, obviously, not being here that often, he was learning the track, if anything, in that yep. very short uh, space of time. But having those quicker cars, carts in front of him, he'll be able to learn quite quickly where he they're gaining do. time. Oh, I'd imagine so. Anyway, it's Lando Norris, let's be real. But uh, I'm hoping so as well for our, for our sake, because I was hoping for some kind of lead before I get in the cart, because not so great of a cart driver, but uh, I'm going in the last stint, so it should be an interesting one, as uh, all the carts are lining up. The 35 of them, it's uh, quite, quite the job to get them all in the right order for uh, after qualifying. I think you're doing yourself a disservice. I watched you earlier looking pretty good out there in the 52s. <laughs> Although, did you know that as you came in for your pit stop, you'd gone faster or done PBs in sector yeah, one and yeah, sector I two? I, but I was kind of. <laughs> I was, I was like, what's he doing? I was in the cart and I was like, okay, this is pretty good. I kind of got held up in the last couple of corners, but I was like, I think we might be going live. So I don't really want to be going <laughs> round and round and round to then have Jess coming up. Like, Get in! So uh, I decided to be safe and uh, I don't think I would have set uh, a time that Lando did. So better to get those guys in, I think. Got to say, this uh, the front of this grid, a lot of the drivers I'm looking at here, especially Jack Goldsmith on the left of your screen and Piers Pryor on the right, um, very, very quick drivers that I've watched before. Jack um, has the, uh, uh, the lap record, isn't that right? Uh, lap record currently is Jake Taplin on a 49.1, oh. but oh. Jack went pretty close in that qualifying session, only uh, less than two-tenths off right, the lap wow. record. Um, that, uh, that lap from Jack was set uh, back in June. And I was saying earlier at the, at the top of the commentary, I'd say conditions today, probably especially for an endurance race, probably perfect. It's not too hot. It's dry, of course. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to lend itself to very consistent lap times coming in. I hope so. Uh, and with it being such a skill difference between the top and the, the bottom of the field, it's <laughs> I hope that everyone can have an enjoyable time because as much as this is a race and it is very, very serious, um, it's also we want everyone to enjoy themselves and not get a little bit too hot. So... Again, the last two days have been ridiculously bad, so I'm really glad that it's just dry, to be honest, and hopefully consistent and not too many crashes, because that's not what we want to see. Of course. Uh, also, a comment, we have a couple of comments coming in, asking who's on the front of the grid. As we said, Jack Goldsmith on the left of your screen there for the number 27 Limitless Racing Team. Um, but Piers Pryor as well, uh, a driver who whose exploits I'm aware of, won the Henry Surtees Challenge race here at Bookmore Park a couple of years ago. Very, very quick driver indeed. So this is going to be a really tight battle, I think, at the front of, uh, front of this race, especially for the, le the first 20 minutes. We'll see what happens as the driver changes start to occur. 
but uh, a very high quality field here today at Bookmore Park. I would hope so. I'd hope so. There's a lot of fans out there that cart all the time, and I'm really glad that a lot of them have turned up today as well. You can see them all in their little custom suits and everything. I'm loving to see that. I unfortunately don't have my own custom suit. I like that board. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it should be a really interesting one. There's, uh, there's a few people. Oh, I've got a question. Which one is Lando Norris? Is that the one you're after? Yeah, which one is Lando Norris? So It'll be fifth. Thir yeah, fifth on the grid, so third back on the left-hand side of the... Uh, grid as we are looking at it on the screen. And cart number 17. So that's the WTF1 one team. So that's the one that I'm in as well. And I'm not going to be as quick as those guys, but uh, hopefully it will be. I won't get mugged when I get in a little bit later on. But uh, as you say, it should be really good at the start of the race. We were here a couple of months ago for another uh, Grand Prix, the Motor Industry Grand Prix. Yep. And uh, we had Jack Aitken uh, in our team, and he was up against one of the guys that, that races here quite a lot. And they were side by side for a good about 15 laps, I think. So I think, again, it should be the same with these guys because they were very close in qualifying from what I briefly saw. Uh, let's go through some of the teams further further down because there's some fantastic team names uh, that I'm, <laughs> I'm looking through. Uh, so we've got the two race active teams, one and two, uh, Subby, one, two, and three. So there's some groups that have come here with multiple multiple carts or multiple entries in. Wow. Uh, the P&O Ferries, uh, and I think we've got one minute to go before the start of the race. My favourite, though, has got to be number eight, which is Caster Mard Lol. <laughs> Although I want, being, being, being an F1 nerd, I want an A on the end. I want it to be Caster Mard Lola. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're about to have lights out. No, well, I hope not. That's Lando getting out of his cart. So he's, he's, he's had enough. Okay, <laughs> um, that's brilliant. Okay, be right back. <laughs> no. uh, I'm hoping he's just sorting something very simple out because I... And there he is. So that's Lando Norris, for anyone wondering, in that beautiful white and blue suit. He uh, didn't he didn't turn up in a default suit, that's for sure. He's uh, very much sticking out from the crowd. And we are moments away from the start of the inaugural WTF1 Grand Prix. And I cannot wait. So as you say, one hour endurance race. Uh, teams of two and three drivers will be making pit stops accordingly. And uh, so your, your, your carts that will be sharing the load especially the teams just here for a bit of fun. Well, everybody's here for a bit of fun. But the ones uh, towards the middle of the park will probably be doing 20-minute stints, but 20-minute stints around Bookmore Park, that's that's not easy. No. I was in for five minutes, and I was already like any double lie down. So 20 minutes should be, uh, should be a dawdle for some of these guys that cart a lot, but uh, more interesting towards the back. So we're waiting then. Eyes on the lights. They're red, they're green, and we're racing in the first ever WTF1 Grand Prix here at Bookmore Park. Very even start from the front row. Jack Goldsmith will lead into turn one. Can Piers Pryor do anything about his lead around the outside? No. So Goldsmith leads, and here we go into hairpin one. Are they all going to survive? There's a lot of loading. No. No, they're not all going to survive. Number 23 has had a spin there. So he's already to the back of the field through hairpin two, and away they go. That was a very good start there, Matt, for uh, Jack Goldsmith. It was. It was nice and clean going into turn one as well. I was obviously a little bit biased on trying to see where cart number 17 is, and it looks like Lando Norris is still in fifth place by the looks of things. But uh, these guys, yeah, nice nice and clean, apart from that one little spin. Yeah. Although we have had a contact warning already. For <laughs> oh, and up the inside of Pierce Pryor was uh, the driver for third place there. Couldn't quite make out who that was. Uh, yellow, flag, uh, yellow lights I can see down out at the bottom of the circuit, so something's happened on lap one. But Goldsmith in the 27 already with a good lead. There's Lando Norris fighting in the number 17 with number 7. That's the, the custom racewear team. Black Ooh. flag already for number 14. Exquisite. So that will be them coming into the pits to have a little bit of a chat, I think, with the stewards. Re-education, I think they call it, don't I they? like that. Which is a, a lovely, lovely term. Lando's got, having an absolute ding-dong with these guys. Looks like he's lost out to number... Oh, no, seven's dropped back, back a little bit, I think. Yeah, he's just nipped past Ed Bars there in the number 11 for Euro Bandits. So the McLaren test driver is starting to come through. I think that's going to make him already up into fifth place. Yes, it is. Do you think you'd ever have heard a Lando Norris train uh, in, in your life? Because no. Because that's what's currently <laughs> forming at the moment. Oh, oh, spin there and a spin in sympathy as well. Oh, and these two drivers are going to think, what on earth's going on through down here? That is possibly... <laughs> Now, I can speak from experience there. <laughs> that is one of the worst corners <laughs> in the country to have that happen to you. 
That's how I got this scar. Oh, my goodness, mate. Oh, that's close into the hairpin as well. Lando oh, losing a couple of positions there as well. Yeah, custom racewear in the number seven there. Lando Norris going back for the inside. Let's have nice a look train. at this on the replay. This is coming down slime sweep really fast. Oh, Right-hander, then left-hander. Driver here is just going to get... Oh, he's wide. He's wide on entry, and he's going to oh. spin it round, and then his mate behind him is going to go, oh, I'm liking the look of that. I'm going to join you in on some of that synchronised spinning there. I was going to say, that was beautifully executed, and uh, hopefully we won't see too much more of that as we see, oh no, there's a lot of sliding going down this downhill section, which as you say is probably the worst point to be stopped as they come flying through uh, that, that right-hander. But it is, what for me, one of the best corners. Yeah. Not just on this circuit, on any kart circuit in the country. You're holding on for dear life, aren't you? You are indeed. Anyway, back with our leaders. Here's the battle for third place between JDR and the number 15 of Ultima. Piers Pryor there in the number six for P&O Ferries. And now we kind of get into this stage of the race map where things just start to calm down at the front of the field a little bit. Drivers have now kind of got the, the measure of each other. They know how fast uh, each cart is and they get into the nitty gritty of this endurance race now. Absolutely, it's settling into the rhythm uh, as they go side by side. That's, that's an interesting one, beautifully executed there. I'm sure that was, but yeah, it, as you say, it's getting into the, the swing of things. It's, it's understanding where am I losing time to the guy ahead that may be pulling away a tenth or two as Oh, okay, no, I just saw a strange camera angle then, but yep, as you can see, coming over the line now to start. And it's 1.8 seconds out in the lead, so it's looking pretty comfortable at the moment, but uh, that can all change in the pit stops. All change in the pit stops. Also change when we get to the point of the race where traffic back starts markers, being involved. Yeah. Good old back markers. Uh, we'll see what happens there. I reckon we're probably... I oh, know we're not a couple of laps off it. The traffic has started now, so that's number 14 <laughs> who's gone lap down. That's the exquisite team that we know have already been black flagged. And also the fact that you know th th there's no blue flags here, nope. so they have to make every single move count. So the back markers will probably be the, the reason why someone wins and someone loses. So it'll be interesting to see right at the end of the race if there's still a battle for the lead, and then monitoring those back markers. You're absolutely right, Matt. That is one of the things with uh, arrive and drive karting. If this is your first time watching arrive and drive karting, uh, it's it's. I there's don't think there's many series that use blue flags, especially in endurance arrive and drive karting like this. So, yeah, the drivers have to uh, not just have the pace to be at the front, but also the racecraft to get past those drivers. And again, especially in a race like this where you've got less experience of those guys towards the back of the field. I'm not going to say that they're, they're doing the wrong thing, but they can be a little bit unpredictable. Yes, unpredictable and just slow at places that you, you maybe wouldn't expect, uh, perhaps even down here. It is a very yep. daunting uh, couple of corners and you kind of want to keep the foot in, but then you're like, actually, no, am I going too fast? And especially for people that haven't carted at all, there's a few people that have never carted before in their lives. There's a few that have never been to Buckmore, as you probably can see by maybe number 28 there. Um, and, you know, that's the thing that you have to take into account uh, when, when lapping. So let's go through a lap of this Buckmore Park circuit here. The you see the number 15 going through turns one and Henry's bend there, turn two into hairpin one, the first of the good opportunities to overtake. But this next one, very wide entry into hairpin two. No move on there for the number 15. And here we get to a really crucial point because a good exit out of here through the sweeping turn left and right and then down Syme sweep and you're full, you're full throttle all the way down this hill until you get to paddock corner at the, to uh, the bottom of the circuit, which you just can't quite see. It's off to the right of screen. They go uh, hard right, then uphill slightly into Garda. Full throttle, downhill section, all the way? Yeah. Really? Until you get to the breaking point. Maybe, yeah. maybe not in one of these solis, but in, in other arriving okay. drivers that have, have been around. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was like, take, I was taking notes. I was like, okay, right, so I'm going to do this later. Okay. You almost have to nearly not take it too much because th there's a big curb on the inside of slime sweep that can kind of bounce you off but you just hook your front right wheel in that curb and it kind of just pulls you round nicely okay. for the uh, the second half of slime sweep uh, slime sweep no uh, castamard lol have had a track limit warning now we should explain the uh, there's been a lot of these uh, tarmac runoffs put in place especially as you can see down here slime sweep um, I'm fully for them, as I say, as, as a driver who's had incidents in that corner, having, having that time. Oh, and the round goes the, the number six. I think it was the number six. Uh, number six, that's second place if it is. Ah, oh, no, it's not number six then. That's not the, uh, the pink helmet of, uh, of Piers Pryor there. Uh, but no, the, the tarmac runoffs are there for the safety of the drivers, uh, very similar to how you see on, on new, newer Formula One circuits, of course. 
But there is still that big solid white line, and if you go beyond it, especially on say the exit of uh, hairpin two, you can you can be penalised. Now I think the drivers are getting three warnings. That's generally how it that's works: correct, three yeah. strikes and you're out. So that's already one track limit warning for exceeding track limits for Castamard Lol. Not completely out there. We don't we don't kick them out for uh, th three corner cuts. <laughs> get out, leave. Sorry, no, you've done you've had three corner cuts. You clearly can't drive. <laughs> oh, that's close as well. Is that? Um, yeah, that was Ed Bars in the uh, Euro Bandits cart making his way past one of the back markers. And this is exactly what we were talking about in terms of it's very very tricky now for the faster drivers to keep that pace up because they've got to negotiate their way past all these back markers. Oh, that was a big sausage curb take then. Oh my goodness me, that was, that's going to hurt as well, isn't it, riding over that sausage yep, curb? Yeah, absolutely. So here's your battle then for fifth place. The oh, 21 is a lap down. There's Lando Norris in on, sixth on, place, son. up the inside of the back marker. Nice. Textbook, absolutely textbook there by Norris into hairpin one. <laughs> I don't think the 21 realises who he's act actually racing against at that point. <laughs> he is allowed that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to criticise right, it. If, may, if, I, if I was out there and Lando Norris came flying past me and I on, go on, a, on, a, on a live stream broadcast, I'd be thinking, yeah, I'm going to have a piece of you, son. I'm going <laughs> to fight back here. And by that, they're, he's already four car lengths behind. But uh, yeah, Lando, as you can see, looking at him right now, settling into his rhythm. He's kind of pulled away from seventh place. He was originally battling at the start of the race. Kind of, uh, Closing on 11, about eight tenths behind. So it'll be interesting. I am really interested to see if Lando, you know, starts to pick up different track characteristics and how, as you say, like hooking the, uh, the, the wheel into a certain curve and yeah. that sort of stuff. It'll be interesting to see at the end of the or end of his stint whether Lando can, can can get up there with the uh, the competitive flat times of, of first and second. It's about keeping it smooth, though. I mean, these these three 90cc uh, Sodi RT8 carts, top speed of 60 miles an hour. Especially if you start hitting those curbs too hard, you can A, damage the car, but at B, you lose a lot of momentum as well. And you can see with these drivers at the front end of the, of the field, they're keeping things nice and smooth as a, oh dear, a track limit warning for WTF1 team number two. Hey, that's our second team. Uh, I take absolutely no... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> who, who have we got in the, uh, in the second car, Matt? So uh, we've got actually one of my friends, uh, Jody Mills. I don't know, if that, who's actually in the car right now? Hopefully, Jody. If, it's, okay. if this is all in order, we'll we'll go with Jody Mills. Uh, yeah, he's he's one of my friends actually, and uh, I've known him for many many years. He's carted. He's in the British UK uh, Karting Championship for UKC. Uh, so I would imagine he wouldn't be doing these track limit warnings and being down in 23rd. But you never know. Now, he may have had an incident at the start of the race that we didn't see. Uh, but yeah, they're down in 23rd at the moment. But uh, I'm up in sixth because I'm in the first team. So that that's that's all that's you all need to matters. know right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're already 10 minutes in then to the first ever WTF1. Grand Prix live here at Bookmore Park. Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media and Matthew Gallagher from WTF1 in the commentary box for you in the early stages of this race. Brought to you by Alpha Live as well. Do follow them on Facebook. Plenty of action from them over the summer. All different championships that they are covering through the year. Lots of great stuff. Here's the battle between the 15 and the 24. This is actually for third place. This is JDR coming under pressure from Ultima, five seconds off the lead. Maybe the driver in the Ultima cart, number 15, I think it's Aaron Hughes at the moment, has, uh, I was just thinking that he's a little bit quicker than the 24 and wants to get through because you can see the number six there, the P&O Ferries team, just starting to get away a little bit. Do you have any live timings of, uh, of how Lando, etc. is doing? Uh, I will try and fix that for okay, you. Let's, it's, let's, uh, let's I mean, my old laptop's going a bit wrong. At all, but I uh, want to know if he's, he's starting to improve and ramp up. But uh, right now, first position, four seconds clear, and uh, that's, that's pretty impressive uh, when you consider how close qualifying was. That's going to be close into turn one. 33 getting a little tiny nudge as we come through the double right hander. Find that one quite interesting as well after a 20 minute stint. You're kind of hanging on into the car, trying to try and not get unseated. And uh, oh, that's a, a Marshall car, I believe, just uh, catching into shot there. But uh, if you're just joining us, this is the WTF1 inaugural Grand Prix. I'm Matt Gallagher, the presenter of WTF1, and I cannot believe that we have our first ever event here at Buckmore Park. We have 105 drivers plus spectators. Uh, they got to see a lovely pre-race show about half an hour ago, and uh, we've put on a pretty good show at the moment, Andrew, would you say? Absolutely. I loved the parade we had earlier. I was, that I was, was jumping up and down. That was awesome. Uh, Formula One car. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we got a couple of videos of that, so uh, do do check those out on the various Facebook pages. Good news, everyone. We, we have, have live timing. timing. Thank Lovely. you very much, Mr. James Fitchew, for sorting that out. Uh, so currently, 
Uh, Lando's fastest lap is a 49.982. Okay, so he's quicker than he went in qualifying. Good, he's improving. Nice. Is and he closing in on fifth? Uh, at the moment, well, if he can do the ultimate pace, yes, he will just start to creep back towards the Euro Bandits there in fifth place. But again, it's all down to back markers, isn't it? It is indeed. If we look at the, the top five, I mean, they're all in the 50s at the moment, and technically, I mean, Lando's matched the uh, last lap of the leader, so uh, I'll take it, uh, even though the leader's just gone purple in the middle sector. Yeah, has indeed, so limitless racing, currently the holders of the fastest lap of the race, 49.257, which once again... That is six hundredths of a second off the lap record in these carts. But they have just received a contact warning, though. I imagine that is for contact with one of the back markers. There is your battle for fifth place. Ed Bars versus Lando Norris. Visibly closer. And into the pits. We've got our first pitter. It's the custom racewear team. So they're in for a driver change. Away goes driver number two. And that looks, uh, that looks a pretty clean stop there, Matt. Yeah, probably quicker than I'll get out the car, but that's, uh, that's fine. So I don't actually have to get out the car, I only have to get in it uh, at the end of the race. Good tactics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just press the accelerator and go. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really impressive, as you say. You know, we're, we're so close to the lap record, which is, which is great to see. Limitless racing, I believe that's actually one of their drivers. Not in at the moment, is uh, James Doherty, who is the Renault eSports driver that's been signed through the uh, F1 eSports series. Mm -hmm. He'll be going a little bit later, so it'll be interesting to see. I watched him cart maybe a, a few months ago for the F1 eSports when they were having all their various challenges. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whereabouts he rates to his teammates uh, because he'll be in the same cart, and it's uh, a fair comparison. How do you think the, the whole eSports thing is going to change the world of, of developing drivers into Formula 1 and, and Formula 2 and levels like that? Do you think it can take over from karting, or is it still going to be a bit of a mix between the two? I think it, it, it will be a, it'll still be a mix you know, for people that can afford it, people that can do it. It will still be very much a, a viable uh, strategy for finding new drivers. But I think F1 Esports and, for example, McLaren's World's Fastest Gamer, mm. uh, Rudy Van Buren, who won that, showed in real life at the Race of Champions. He was quicker than Tom Fridge. Christensen, I think he beat Lando Norris in a race as well. Yep. And to think that he's never probably been in that specific car, or car, sorry, it's, it's just showing that you know, gaming skills and attributes that you get from just sitting at home on a wheel does translate yeah we're still watching this battle for fifth place then let's have a quick run down the top 10 then as we are now just up to a quarter of the way through this race my goodness it's going very very quickly limitless racing then lead by 6.4 seconds ahead of P&O ferries in second place ultimate have got through they have passed JDR for third place so that's a good move for them and they're going to try and close in now on the P&O ferries team in second place uh, Euro bandits are fifth ahead of WTF one's uh, first team in sixth place igp managers team oh there's a massive spin there down into the tire barrier for number 10 that was quite a dramatic slide down there through sign sweep and that was uh, team 10 in cart 10 as kelvin's going to join me on the uh, the commentary kelvin oh careful i'll just do that whilst uh, kelvin's uh, <laughs> sorting his headset out no worries Kelvin van der Linde, welcome to the uh, Crow's Nest. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be in Buckmore Park. Um, and yeah, cool to be here with some sunny weather in England for a change. Yes, we're, we're all a bit perplexed as to what's happened this summer. We're not used to this, uh, this big golden orb in the sky that's been with us for the last two months. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's always cool. Uh, I don't know if they had wet weather tyres for us anyway, but uh, luckily for the racing today, I think uh, it played out the right way for us. So obviously you've gone on to have a, a really fantastic racing career, racing for Audi at the moment. Um, let's walk back, karting days, what were they like for you as a, as a kid? Yeah, well they were very important because in, back in, in the days when I started karting, simulators were not really good enough like they are today. So karting was really the, you know, the, the grassroots of, of motorsport um, and of course a very critical part of every driver's development. So. I definitely look back on my karting days with fond memories and definitely learnt a lot from it. Absolutely. And do you still do you still get in the karts often or is today a bit of a bit of a one off? I, I tend to when I'm not in a race car I tend to be lying on the couch more often, so <laughs> I, I don't really fancy going karting unless it's for WTF one's event. Um, but uh, yeah of course it's always a laugh you go out with some friends and uh, you know, I, I prefer to do it for, for a laugh nowadays. Obviously, your teammate in this race, Lando Norris, starting to close in on number 11 now at bars as uh, getting through the traffic. You've done a lot of endurance racing, obviously, the, the, the being a, a win of the 24 hours of the Nürburgring. 
Um, oh, is Ed Bars is off? Uh, and I think that might mean he's lost a position to Lando Norris. Oh, sorry, I took my eyes off the screen for one second there. I don't know if we can get a replay of that, Luke. Um, but traffic management, yes, how uh, important is it traffic. in a race like this? You've done a lot of injury. Watch the issue for number... Oh, my goodness oh. me, it was the eight and the number one coming together. And uh, Ed Bars and number 11 was just an innocent party. Wrong place, wrong time. But that does mean that uh, your cart, Kelvin's up to fourth place. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's a lucky win for us. And... Uh, that's actually just indicated, you know, the, the the art of, okay, this is not an endurance race, but it is the art of endurance racing is being able to interpret the, the traffic. And uh, luckily this time it worked out well for Lando. He managed to, to get up into P4. So nice one. Good stuff indeed. Uh, we have started seeing some pit stops as, as well. Limitless Racing, your race leaders of a few moments ago, uh, were in the pits. They have done a driver change. Kelvin's, uh, I think, getting ready to go and jump in the cart. Indeed, that was a good little chat. He's, Kelvin's in good form, isn't he? He is indeed. I'm back. Um, I thought we'd get a couple of minutes from Kelvin, see what he thought, see what he thinks of karting, and uh, first lying on the couch. Uh. <laughs> it, I think what we say that he's a prime athlete and recovery time is very, very yes. important. Yes, yeah. The more recovery time, the better, yes. especially for us normal human beings as well. We need to I'm, I'm sure. a lot of recovery. <laughs> <laughs> so, back with the race then. The number six of P&O Ferries is now your race leader. Uh, Piers Pryor still pounding round there, but he has been closed in now by the number 15 Ultima cart. There's some uh, back markers getting involved and a move for the lead there. Up the inside goes Ultima on P&O Ferries, and that is indeed a change for the lead. Now, can they make their way through this traffic? Because that's going to give Piers Pryor and the number six machine a chance to get back up the inside if the... Uh, traffic doesn't uh, behave itself, but now I think that is going to be ultimate through and in a clear lead now. Don't know if we can. Oh, it's contact! Contact there, and was that the leader taken out? I'll have to check. It was the number 13. Oh, apologies. It wasn't the number 15, but I thought that was a moment there for the leader. Let's watch this again. Three wide down into Simon Sweep, and simply, that doesn't work. But it was the leaders. It was the 15 and the 6 getting together side by side, and poor back marker, number 13. Unlucky for some, that's HSS Racing, often in the wall. Unbelievable scenes. Unbelievable scenes. So Kelvin is about to go out. He's, there he is. He's got his helmet on. He's uh, ready to go. About to wave in Lando. Ed. And quite a few driver changes being done now. Number 11, Ed Bars is in for Euro Bandit. He will hand the cart over to either Connor Taylor or Will Fuchs. Uh, and out they go. The number one's in as well, 35. So a lot of our teams from the top 10 in now. And as we know, for, with the inside knowledge, inside knowledge, number 17 is about to make a pit stop as well. But it's been a very good stint by Lando Norris in the number 17. Great qualifying right at the end, getting the cart up into the top five and it's still there as we're 20 minutes into the race yep Lando's looks like he's improved he's uh, got his consistency for sure sitting in a comfortable fourth place for now and uh, I have a good feeling about Kev Kelvin I think Kelvin will go in and set some good lap times and uh, hopefully start to close in on the podium places but it will uh, require a pretty mon monumental effort as Lando continues for another lap but I believe that is because Kelvin is yet to wave him in Hopefully Lando does see it and doesn't do the whole hour race because I think both me and Kelvin would like a go. Um, but uh, I think he's, his competitive side will be coming out. He's not winning and he'll, he'll want to be winning. He will want to be winning. Keep your comments coming in on the YouTube stream. Hello to Mario Master 2 who I think is commenting about that, uh, that bit time. of contact between number 6 and 15. All the time you have to leave it to space. <laughs> it's true. You do have to leave the space and the space wasn't left there. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, uh, Any cast chain berries? Uh, Stuart, where's, where's Stuart? Is it, uh, no. is here for this event. Um, oh, number 17 is in. WTF1's first team is in. So Lando Norris will hand over to Kelvin van der Linde. In fact, quite a few of our leaders are in as well. 24 is, uh, that's JDR. So JDR nearly lost a position there in that pit stop to... WTF1, number 19 complete a good pit stop as well. So lots and lots of teams doing the 20 minute changeover now. And uh, we will start to see then who has done the best job in the pit stops. Oh, was the number 10. <laughs> that that was an interesting moment for the number 10. I don't think I've ever seen a cart out near, uh, near that particular wall. Um, 
But now we'll start to see now who's done the good job through the pit stops. But at the moment, it's still P&O Ferries, Ultima and IGP Manager. Your top three are yet to pit. So we'll wait for them to do that. And they have to pit at least twice. Two mandatory pit stops in this race. So yep. Because there's three drivers in each team, it's, uh, it'd be a bit unfair if someone had bought a whole team and decided to do the whole race without without any pit stops. So two mandatory pit stops for every team. So Limits Racing still very much out in front. How far are they ahead at the moment? Two and a half seconds? Uh, yeah, they are uh, 0.3 of a second ahead of limit uh, ahead of IGP, but they're look at that oh, nearly wow. 12 seconds clear of the next seconds. cart that's made a pit stop already, which is JDR in fifth. So they picked quite early, didn't they? They did indeed. Yeah. Interesting. There's your race leader, Piers Pryor, as Ultima are in for their first pit stop out of two. So the number six P&O Ferries cart has a clear lead now, working their way through some of the traffic. I think I'm going to go and hunt Oh down. dear. Oh, oh dear, no, oh dear. It's fine, it's the second team. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we need some re-education, but it's not for me. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what that, that re-education was. Uh, I'll have to go and find that out. I'm going to go and try and find Lando Norris uh, for a quick chat, so uh, I'll see you very shortly. Cheers, Matt. We'll see him, uh, we'll see him back shortly and hope we find out as well what the cause of that black flag was for the second of the WTF1 teams. You're watching live coverage of the first ever WTF1 Karting Grand Prix. There's another black flag, or at least a repeat flag for WTF1 2. Live coverage then of this one hour endurance race here at Bookmore Park in Chatham, Kent. Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media with you for the whole race on this Alpha live stream. Do follow at Alpha Live on Facebook. Uh, that's a like, actually, no, with it being Facebook. Like Alpha Live on Facebook and like Double Dash Motorsport Media as well. Here is your battle then for fourth place. This is JDR and WTF 1 1. I'm going to start calling them A and B. So I'm going to take matters into my own hands here. But Kelvin van der Linde racing now very, very hard against the number 24. It's Jamie Tyler at the wheel of the JDR cart at the moment. Very accomplished MSA racer. Here's your leader, still yet to pit the number six. So it looks like the P&O Ferries team are running a bit of an alternative strategy. They've still got to make two pit stops, remember. They still have to do that. But so far, so good. Do keep your comments coming in on both the Facebook and the YouTube stream. Great to have you, so many of you watching along. I do hope you're enjoying your Sunday afternoon. 35 minutes of this race to go then. We're getting to the crunch point now. Most teams have made their first pit stop. In fact, I think it only is, yes, of the top 26, only P&O Ferries, this cart here, number six, has yet to make its pit stop. So 17.6 seconds is now the lead for the number six. Here's the number one. This is the race active team. And they are currently a little bit further down the order. In fact, they're a long way down the order. They're in that position that nobody likes to be. 35th out of 35. But they're looking pretty quick at the moment. So uh, a 50.691, the fastest lap for race active number one at the moment. Uh, they are a full lap, though, behind Exquisite, so I imagine Race Active 1 have had some kind of issue there. Let's put them in that position. See, uh, I think that was Tom Fox flying through there, a driver I recognise from the BUKC. And I do think we are now going to head across back to Matt, who's got Lando Norris with him. Apologies, folks. We've got some uh, technical issues across at the uh, the interview stand, so we'll just do a little bit of filler. You're not missing anything, and I think now we are good. We are good for uh, Matt to have a chat with Lando Norris, who's just got out of the number 17 cart. Lando, 
Lando, P5, P4, P6, whatever. Yeah, we were P4 at one point. P1? No, I don't, I don't think we can lie uh, so much. Lando, how was that stint for you? You just said that you were a bit slow at the start, but uh, how did it go for you? Uh, it was tough. Um, I knew my, my lap I did in quali was uh, like, I probably would never have done it again. So I knew it was going to be a tough race. I think I was a bit out of my depth in P5. Yeah. But um, it was a good stint. I think I, I managed to stay in fifth or fourth. So uh, it was tough and it's freaking bouncy. So I hope my ribs a bit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were saying you got a bit battered and bruised around here. I, and it's quite a, is it quite a unique kart track compared to some of the other ones you've raced at purely because of the undulation and whatnot? Uh, pretty unique. I mean, there is a couple of others which are something similar. Um, but yeah, it's not often I drive a rental car, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always a bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't been in a proper car for, since 2014, so it's been a long time. So just experiencing, experiencing it again and the bumps and everything. Is, it's more physical than you think, so good luck. <laughs> so F1 car, rental car, which, which, where does it rate in terms of battered and bruised? <laughs> I think this was worse. Really? Yeah. I feel like when I get out of a, a car, probably after a race, I feel more chilled than I do right now. Yeah. But then again, we've had 35 drivers out there, at, yeah, at one time, 35 drivers. How did you find sort of managing that? Because I, I saw a few moments where you were kind of turning around and didn't really know where everyone was. <laughs> was, it, was it quite a, a, a sort of stressful experience? Because you don't want to hurt yourself, do you, uh, being no. Formula One reserve driver? No, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> but uh, it was tough because there are a lot of um, not so fast guys out there and uh, they often just spin for some reason. There was a big impact that we saw uh, a bit yeah. earlier on, where was that one of them hit the sausage curb hard. Oh, down the hill? Yeah, no, there was... An, oh, another, I don't know if you saw it, actually. Maybe right. you just got ahead, because you took fourth place at one point. To be fair, you didn't really know where you were, did you? You were like, where was I? <laughs> so were you learning as you went along? Because I was speaking to Andrew, was saying about, you know, there's a lot of, like, unique bits where, you know, you'll try and dip a, a wheel into the into the curb to try and rotate the car more. Yeah. Did you learn any kind of things as you went along? Is this for you or for everyone? Please help. <laughs> uh, the two main ones um, are, you know, as you go down the hill yeah. into like the really bouncy right hander. Yeah. Uh, around there, you have to get like all over the inside curb. Otherwise, you just bounce and probably hit the barrier. Uh, and then the second one is into kind of the last corner, the overhill right hander. Uh, you need to be really tight on the exit. Well, I wasn't doing it, but <laughs> the guy ahead so of me was, <laughs> and he was quicker, so I think it was correct. So you're telling me what you should have done now that you've got out of the car. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Right, well, that has been Lando Norris, McLaren F1 reserve driver. Lando, thank you. Have you enjoyed today? Because we've had a nice little pre-show beforehand. An F1 car went around the kart circuit. Have you, have you enjoyed the day? You're smiling, so I'd imagine so. No. <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I mean, to get back in a kart was good, so. Uh, Take you back to your roots. It does. Maybe I wasn't quite as fast then as what I used to be, but uh, it does feel good. Yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Let's throw you back to Andrew in the comms box. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Lando. My goodness me, it's all been kicking off in the last two minutes. Uh, changes for position up at the front end of the field. Uh, Ultima are up to fourth, JDR fifth, as finally the P&O ferries cart is in for its first of two mandatory pit stops. WTF one number one team, or A team, uh, depending on which way you want to be, um, are now down to sixth. Kevin van der Linde is, uh, has been bullied out of the way by some of the back markers. I saw him running wide out of paddock, taking avoiding action. Uh, but it definitely feels like someone's turned the pressure cooker up to about level seven now, as it's got all a little bit frantic out there. There's been a few black flags in there as well for team IR, uh, ILR2 and team 23 as well. So uh, a couple of the drivers maybe getting a little bit tired out there already, as we say. 20 minutes, 30 minutes in a go-kart to those kind of uninitiated. Oh, as the number seven's having all kinds of trouble with the uh, the back markers. This, this is the custom racewear team. Uh, this isn't for position. In fact, no, it is for position. That's the number 12. Oh, round! Round goes uh, the custom racewear team, and that's them been taken out by a back marker. That's team 26, who are down in 23rd position. What a shame. Well, let's have a look at this again. It's the number 12... Uh, the WTF 1B team that the number seven's fighting with up the inside. Oh, 26 just locks up the rear axle, creams into the side of number seven, and round they both go at hairpin one. That's a real shame there for custom race wear, but at least they can get going again pretty quickly. Clutched carts, these, there's some arrive and drive carts where direct drive nature would mean that you'd lose significant number of seconds in that kind of incident, and there has now been a black flag 
for the number 26 for that misdemeanor. So they will have to come into the pits and uh, as, a, as Matt's been putting it, have some re-education of their driving standards, which I think is a, is a, a term I'm going to steal and, and use consistently now over, <laughs> over the next year or so as we do more of these events with Alpha Live. Here's the number six, here's your new leader then. So in fact, look at this. The first pit stop has produced a very interesting result. Piers Pryor, going longer, has pulled the P&O Ferries cart into the lead of the race after the pit stop. It's uh, Ollie Wedden now at the wheel of the number six. They are two seconds clear of limitless racing. So what a stint there from Piers Pryor. And knowing how good a driver Ollie Wedden is, I think you've got to make them favourites for this race now. Black flag, another black flag, this time for Team ILR2 and Team 26. There's the number seven, now recovering. They lost about seven seconds there for me over WTF1's B team. 13 with the arm in the air probably means they're making a pit stop. Or no, maybe not. Number 27 goes by. That's the second place now, limitless racing cart we saw Jack Goldsmith in for the start of it so this will be James Doherty in now very distinctive black red and yellow helmet let's have a look at this at what's happening here with Doherty into hairpin one oh number 13 starters have a bit of a fight back there uh, a bit of an apologetic hand there but that will have been a nervous moment for limitless racing but the gap is coming down. 1.6 seconds now, the gap between P&O Ferries and Limitless Racing. We've got a race on here, ladies and gentlemen, at Bookmore Park. 26 minutes, 10 seconds to go. Contact warning for the number 13, which is HSS Racing. But very, very even pace now between the two uh, leaders. They are 13 seconds clear of Eurobandits in third. JDR fourth, WTF one's A-team in fifth. So Kelvin van der Linde continuing to do some really good work here, keeping with the regular drivers. As we say, this is the first time van der Linde's been to Bookmore Park. So he's doing a very, very good job against drivers who race here regularly. Look at this traffic, though. A lot of traffic now coming up for the leaders. And this could offer the opportunity to Limitless Racing's James Doherty to try and get past Ollie Wedden in the number six. Close for the lead. Very close for the lead. So, was that in the pit stops or was it always that close? Uh, no, this is from the pit stops. Number six going longer on their first stint has used track position. Well, as up the inside of some of the back markers there goes Ollie Wedden. So number six has jumped 27 in the pit stops, but the number 27 for me right now, Matt, looks a little bit quicker. So this will be interesting. I'm about to go in the car in about two minutes' time. I've got a chance for a podium here. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm hoping top ten. <laughs> nah, come on. <laughs> Sixth place at the moment. Oh, it was a massive slide there. I was thinking that was for the number two. But they managed to save it coming out of Paddock Corner. Uh, we have now got a top ten that is on the lead lap. So there's, I, I think, at least top ten. You, you've got a good 14, 15 second gap there between 10th and 11th, right? Yeah. You can I'm hold hoping, on to that. I'm just hoping I don't get stuck behind the back markers because I'm not quick enough. That's the hairpin <laughs> two. Hairpin two. Hairpin That's two. the lunge corner. Yeah, so th this, not this one. This one this coming one. up here. Really lunge wide it. entrance and then just lunge it up the inside. Jobs, will, jobs are good. I will note that. I yes. hope I can at least do that once. And, do, and don't outbreak yourself like I always do. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. OK, right, I'm going to go into the car right now. Goodbye, everyone. Best Thanks of luck, luck, Matt. Have a good one. So Matt Gallagher will be getting into the number 17 car, which is now up to fifth place. So Kelvin van der Linde has got through, and here's your battle for the lead. Number six versus 27. They're up behind the number one, which is uh, that's got some good pace, but they are a couple of laps down. Can Ollie Wedden hold off James Doherty into turn one? He's going to go to the inside of the back marker. Wedden's got to be brave on the brakes, and yes, he's got through. But can Doherty get underneath into hairpin one? He goes for the move of the inside. Bit of contact between the two leaders, but through goes the number 27. Number one's getting involved again, and number six will be up the inside. But that's a great move by James Doherty into the lead then for the Limitless Racing Team in the number 27.
past the number six of P&O Ferries. Let's have a look at that again. Classic manoeuvre into hairpin one. Jerks to the inside late on the brakes. Number six tries to turn in, but uh, that's not going to work today. And Doherty is through. 23 minutes of the first ever WTF1 Karting Grand Prix then here at Bookmore Park Kart Circuit in Kent Chatham. Racing this fleet of Sodi RT8 carts, which you can drive yourself if you go to the website for Bookmore Park, get all the details on there, and you and your mates can be down here having a go yourself. It's www.bookmore.co.uk. through Simon Sweep and already you can start to see now Limitless Racing are pulling away from P&O Ferries. This is a crucial stage of the race for the P&O Ferries team. They've got to get back on that pace that they had earlier. Do keep your comments coming in. Any questions? We've got a question from uh, Pedro Carvalho. Where are the blue flags? No blue flags here. Arrive and drive karting. All equal machinery. It's about driver skill, it's not just about being fast, it's about getting past the carts cleanly. Certain drivers probably wouldn't like it. Certain drivers of a German variety would be, would be calling for the blue flags, but uh, not here. There's a signal from Kev uh, Kelvin van der Linde. I think that's the international I'm coming in next time round, boys. <laughs> He's giving us a thumbs up. He knows we're watching him. He knows. He's currently battling with an... He's battling in a position here. Number 15 there, the ultimate car. The guys behind me are highly amused by this. Kelvin van der Linde clearly taking this race very, very seriously. Oh, and he's hit the kerb there. There's a nod of the head. He knows he's messed up there. And uh, he's going to have to come in this lap. Hand over to Matthew Gallagher. But that was a good, enjoyable battle there between WTF 1's A team. And the ultimate car into the pits comes van der Linde. Hard on the brakes there. You'll see Matty jump in. Kelvin jumps out. Oh, the car's rolling away. Grab it, Matt. <laughs> it will try and drive without you. And away he goes. So can Matthew Gallagher hold on to this top ten? I think he can. I think he's got the speed to do so. He's just got to hit it hard. And uh, he's come out in ninth position. There he is. Hopefully he's going to use all the things that he's been taught over the last hour. He's got the number 18 ahead of him. That's uh, that's one of the back markers. That's, actually, that's WTF1's B team. So we've got a WTF1 derby here. Don't take each other out, boys, for goodness sake. So P21 for the B team. Oh, is this chaos down at the paddock? corner and I think the WTF1 boys are involved. Uh, Matty has a, he's got his chaos. It's like F1 YouTuber Championship all over again. This is why we have to keep him behind the camera boys. Keep him off the race circuit for goodness sake. So he's already had one lap which has had far more chaos than both Norris and van der Linde. This is great stuff. 19 minutes more of this ladies and gentlemen. trying to make his way through some of this traffic. Uh, actually, the battle with the number 22, that is for position. That's the IGP manager team who have made their second pit stop. So this is a full-on battle for eighth place between number 22 and 17. You see number 22 there. Oh, big moment there down through Simon Sweep. That is not the point of the circuit where you really want to be overtaking. JDR in the, in the pits, number 22 are wide. This is a chance for Gallagher up the inside of the number 10. They're a lap down. Got to say, this is hard. Having come, uh, having come out of the pits in a really good position, straight into a squabbling pack of carts, I cannot, cannot overstate enough how hard that is. There's number 35. They've just re-emerged from a pit stop. That's Team 35 in 16th place. Past the number five. That's another cart that's a lap down. Oh, someone's rounding hairpin one. I didn't quite catch who it was. I think it's a blue suit and a white helmet. There is Gallagher in the number 17. Still in ninth place. 
One second behind IGP manager's team, the number 22. Down through Simon Sweep. Round the outside of one of the back markers, very impressive. Oh, someone's taken a, a trip across the, I think it's the number 28 that's just taken a trip across the runoff there. Uh, the leaders are also not that far behind as well, the number 27 and the number 6. There is the 27. So WTF1 go a lap down, 17 minutes to go. There is the car that they are chasing, the 7th place IGP manager team, number 22. Although, oh, that is for position. And they have lost a position there to Custom Racewear. So Custom Racewear, who've completed their second pit stop, back out again in seventh place. Uh, sorry, in eighth place, in the number seven cart, rather. 17 minutes to go. Uh, let's just have a look through the pit stop situation. Limitless Racing and P&O Ferries both yet to make their second stops. Euro Bandits are the first cart on the road that have made their second stop. So they're looking good for a podium here as the number 29 re-emerges from the pit lane. Here's the 2 and the 15. The 15, the Ultima team in fifth place. This is not for position. The number 2 is down in 14th place. Contact warning for the number 15. Need to be careful here. This is what it's about, getting past the slower drivers carefully. They're managing their own race. Currently the Ultima team, and there's a contact warning, as I say, again for them. Uh, one second behind the JDR car, the number 24, but I think that's going to have extended out over this uh, past half a lap or so. Number 15 really having some trouble here, getting past the number two. The number two, as we say, is the race active two team down in 14th place Not quite sure who the driver is at uh, on board the cart it might be sam lukes hopefully someone will confirm that for me in the comments here's the big opportunity to overtake then down into heaven too but now number 15 is not close enough not close enough that time around for michael hafford 15 minutes to go then in the first ever WTF1 Grand Prix live here from Buckmore Park. Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media in the comms box for you with Alpha Live bringing you your coverage and the stream. Here's your battle then for sixth place. This is uh, the IPG managers team and the number 12, which is Will's the Fastest Ones team. I don't think we've talked about them much so far. Uh, this is the team with Ian Williams, I think it is, currently at the wheel of that cart. So Ian, a very experienced driver. Yellow flags out down at Paddock Corner, I can see, but it's been cleared now. Through the fast section of the course now, down into Sime Sweep going past the novice there in the number 29. Just making their way around the course nice and easily. Let's talk about the leaders though. Limitless Racing are pulling away from P&O Ferries. They are now 4.3 seconds clear of P&O Ferries. But both of those carts, as we mentioned, yet to make their final pit stops of the race. 22 trying to make their way through some of the traffic. RGP manager again, still in sixth place team being led by Jack Baseford. Contact warning for Team 34 in Carts 34. And we've got a couple of pit stops as well. TJS Racing in from 11th place. Stubby, uh, uh, Subby 3 start, uh, sorry, in 17th place. They're both in for pit stops. Uh, that promotes WTF1 uh, one's A team back into 9th place. So Matthew Gallagher, let's have a look at Matt's times. He's currently, uh, well, he's just done a 51.798, and that's not bad. That's quicker than he went in qualifying. So he's making progress, and uh, he's not that far off the lap times of the drivers around him as well. So if you can keep that pace up, WTF1's first team, or A team, the team with the better drivers, will take a top ten.
Good work being done through the traffic then by, uh, in fact, no, not through the traffic because Limitless Racing have made a pit stop. So Limitless Racing are in for their second pit stop. They've re-emerged uh, eight seconds behind P&O Ferries and I don't think that's going to be enough for P&O Ferries to get in, change driver and back out again when it comes to their second pit stop. Here's the 24, Jack Dex Racing commonly known as JDR, black flag for the number two, race active number two. We saw they were having a few squabbles earlier on, about five minutes ago, but they have been black flagged for some form of infringement and will need to come into the pits from 15th place. Hand in the air from a JDR driver, not too happy with some of the back markers there. JDR are currently 8.7 seconds behind the Euro Bandits in third. So they've got a bit of a tall order here to close that in in the last uh, 12 minutes of this race. Number three re-emerged from the pits, that's the Subby 1 team, and number two re-emerged from their black flag, uh, or serving their black flag there. Back out on circuit, so a few more teams just making their final pit stops now. Number 14's in. Uh, towards the bottom end of the field, that's the exquisite team. We've actually made four pit stops now. What's going on there? Where's the 18 come from there? I've never seen a car coming from that direction. There's your... Uh, net leader at the moment, number 27, Jack Goldsmith, back at the wheel as he was at the start. So they've got a pit stop in hand over P&O Ferries. Back with Matthew Gallagher then here in the number 17. What's his pace like? 52.5. So he's trying to get past some of this traffic at the moment. 35 ahead of him. That's team 35. Two laps down. Matt going for the move. Can he go around the outside? Do the switch pack, Matt. Can he do it? No, not quite. It is a very, very tricky corner hairpin too. Arguably easy to overtake, but until until you've done it a couple of times, it always feels like you're lunging from so far back and it's going to result in an accident. I think Matty just needs to be a bit brave. He's got the leader or second place up the inside of him. Now, can he use Jack Goldsmith's pace to try and get through the number 19s in there as well? That is for position as well. The number 19 of Nice Guys finished last in 10th place, trying to get past WTF1's Matthew Gallagher into turn one. And I think number 19 is going to have the run at the inside. Good move there into turn one from number 19. I think it's Liam Carter currently driving that cart. So WTF1 down to, that will be 10th place. Still a top 10 though, that's what the aim was at the start of this race with 10 minutes to go. Down through Simon Sweet, looking through, like good pace. Oh, big massive spin there and a load of tyre smoke for the number 23. That's the Team 23 team currently down in 23rd position. That's, that's a nice matchup. Cart 23, Team 23 in 23rd. Well, they were in 23rd, but uh, there won't be any more. So, yeah, wide entry. Yeah, that's not what you want to do. You need to get that curb on driver's right. And around they go. Well avoided by the 18 and the number four there. Black flag for Team 30. Now, that's a big one because Team 30 up in 12th place. So that's going to cost them a few positions. I'm um, just looking at the gap between WTF1's Matthew Gallagher and the next car behind. It's three seconds. It's three seconds. So at the moment, TGS Racing are closing it. Oh, someone's gone half round there, right in front of the number 12 of Will's the fastest one. Let's have a look at this again. This is coming off Paddock Corner. Oh, the 33 gets a little bit squirrely. I think it was the number nine that went. And what a, what a piece of driving to avoid that from the number 12. Clouds have come over a bit. I think it's cooled off slightly, which will be good for some of the drivers with less experience. Oh, Matthew nearly <laughs> gets put in the wall by a novice. That will have been a, a hair raise. The number 14's up the inside there, but Gallagher holds it round the outside. And I'm just going to check where they are. They have fallen out the top 10, and round goes the number 14. Round goes the number 14. Contact there with Gallagher. Well, we'll have to review that one again. As to what happened there, that was the number 14. They were way down the order anyway. Now let's have a look at this again. Into hairpin one. I think the number 14 is going to go full Daniel Ricciardo and it's just not going to... No, that's not going to work, boys. That's... No, no. That's not going to work. <laughs> the look round from the back is brilliant. Gallagher just thinks, 
what on earth was that? That was a very optimistic lunge there at hairpin one. There's a number 19 going through your shot. Nice guys finish last. That's a terrible team name because you're not last. Maybe they're not nice guys. Continuing to fight here with the 35 who are in 13th place. Two laps off the lead. So a lap separating these two carts. And the number 19 is indeed through. Thirty-five has a spin. It's definitely getting to that stage of the race where a lot of the drivers is, uh, or the drivers are getting a little bit tired and trying to push hard at the same time to uh, to catch carts further up the road. Here is actually your battle for the lead. Then P and O Ferries and Limitless Racing, first and second on the road. Uh, the the important piece of information though is P and O Ferries are yet to make their second pit stop. They've tried something a little bit different, and for the most part it has worked, but they've not been able to hold back Limitless Racing. Jack Goldsmith up the inside into side sweep. That's a very brave manoeuvre. There's contact between Goldsmith and Wedden down the hill through Syme sweep. Both drivers did very well to not take each other out. They go past the novice in the number 29. Wedden defending like mad, because he knows how crucial this is. It might be irrespective because, as I say, the number six needs to make a pit stop. Number 27 pushing them. A bit of shake and bake round Cafe Corner into turn one. Then Goldsmith will try to go back to the inside as they go through Henry's Bend. He's going to have the run down the inside. Big lump of curb there. Wedden goes back to the inside. Defends really well through Hairpin 1. Hairpin 2 is next. This side by side again. This is fantastic racing here at Bugmore Park. Goldsmith goes back to the inside, little bit of curb there, still side by side here, and through the chicane, still side by side, this is ridiculous, down through Syme Sweep once again, a lot less contact than last time, there's a back marker in front of them who will get involved at some stage, and well, what a piece of defensive driving that was for Molly Wedden, he's held off Jack Goldsmith, who is a very, very fast driver, let me tell you, for a full lap and a half, so many attacks from the number 27 that was fantastic racing and it's still going on Wedden goes to the inside again 5 minutes and 42 seconds of this race to go Goldsmith's trying to go round the outside through Henry's bend Wedden goes defensive again Goldsmith goes for the cutback can he get alongside into hairpin 2 oh Wedden's run a little bit deep there this might be the chance that Goldsmith's been looking for that's still side by side great racing between these two Wedden could easily have run Goldsmith around the outside. He's gone round the outside of Ollie Wedden. What a move that is by Jack Goldsmith into the lead here at Bunkmore Park with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Wedden goes back for the inside though. Change for the lead again. That won't officially be a lead change, of course, as they come over the line. They're coming round Cafe Corner, still side by side. There's contact round Cafe Corner, one of the fastest corners on the circuit. Who's going to have the lead over the line? It's, oh no, Limitless Racing did edge it over the line. Well, I thought that if Goldsmith was through with that he'd take off into the lead, but no, Wedden has fought back brilliantly here. Back into the lead then, through Hepin 1. Do we have to have the number six coming for a pit stop? This is fantastic. 27 still at the inside through the fast sweeper again and I think this time Jack Goldsmith oh no there's a back marker out of control down the hill has no idea what's coming up behind him black flag for the number 22 IGP manager team that could be crucial but Goldsmith is now through past Oli Wedden limitless racing back to the lead of the race then with four minutes to go now surely the number six will come in for a pit stop in the next couple of laps to serve their second pit stop. Uh, as I say, the number 22 IGP manager team have had a black flag. I was at least a saw one on timing. That might just put WTF 1's A team and Matthew Gallagher back into the top 10. We'll wait and see. 14's having a go at number 6 there. Uh, a lap or so down. Not long in this one hour endurance race. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's been absolutely fantastic from start to finish here at Bookmore Park. But now Goldsmith starting to show the pace he has in that number 27. He took pole position. He was clear by half a second in qualifying. He's been untouchable so far today. 
And he's probably got, what, four laps to go. Into hairpin one goes the leader. 1.5 seconds, the gap between uh, Limitless Racing and P&O Ferries. Eurobandit's still there in third place. They've had a really good race. Uh, they are 1.7 seconds clear of Jack Dex Racing in fourth place. Ultima in fifth. Custom Racewear up to sixth. Uh, Will's the fastest one, seventh. And IGP Manager, who've had that black flag, and they've come back out in eighth place. So lost two positions there. Two and a half minutes to go then, and I think we know who's going to win this one, barring any disasters. Limitless Racing, the team of Jack Goldsmith and James Doherty, have been untouchable. They lost the lead for a little bit as the pit stops worked their way through, but that fantastic battle with p and Ferries that you saw a couple of moments ago have given them the lead in this race. 2.8 seconds to go. I can see Piers Pryor in the pink helmet uh, getting ready for a pit stop, so this... Uh, alternative strategy put by P&O Ferries is going to see him jump back in for probably the last lap of the race. Eurobandit's still there in third. WTF1 and uh, Matthew Gallagher currently, I can tell you, is 11th. And he's still he's got some really good pace, 52s, which for uh, a relatively inexperienced driver around this place, that's pretty good. Uh, news on the other WTF1 team. They're currently in 24th position. We're waiting, of course, for p and Ferries. I think they should retain to second place. Pit stop's taking, I think, about 10 seconds, 10, 12 seconds, maybe. And they are currently 25 and a half seconds clear of this cart here, the number 11 Euro Bandits team. One minute to go, then. Leader is currently midway round the circuit, so there'll be this lap uh, plus one more. There's the number 24 Jack Dex racing cart. JDR, uh, a team that run quite a few MSA operations, but use arrive and drive karting as a means to develop their driver's racecraft. Oh, it's a big moment there for Euro Bandits, and this actually is the battle for third place. This might not be over. A lot of time was lost there by Euro Bandits as we are now on the last lap. There is your leader. So let's just keep an eye on the battle for third place. And uh, just to let you know, I don't think P&O Ferries have pitted yet. They've not actually pitted for their second pit stop. So whether they're going to do something akin to Michael Schumacher, Silverstone 98 and pit on the last lap, we'll remain to see. But here comes Jack Goldsmith. What a drive by Limitless Racing. Goldsmith and Doherty have been unstoppable here today at Buckmore Park. And Limitless Racing win the first ever WTF1 Karting Grand Prix here at Buckmore Park. And uh, yet, sure enough, there goes Ollie Wedden into the pit stops to do a slightly bizarre driver change. Piers Pryor will roll it out over the line to take second place. Great celebration there from number 19. There it is. So second place for P&O Ferries. Third place is it going to be Euro Bandits? Is it going to be JDR? We're waiting for them coming up the hill. Oh, they are so close. They're bumper to bumper as they come past me in the commentary box over Cafe Corner. It's going to be a drag race to the line. And just ahead is the number 11. And they take it by 0.111 of a second ahead of JDR in fourth. Ultima will finish in fifth place. Custom Racewear, who had a spin after being taken out by a back marker midway through that race, will finish sixth. Those were your runners on the lead lap. Uh, Will's the fastest one in seventh. IGP manager eighth. Nice guys finished last. Uh, they're clearly not nice guys because they didn't finish last. They take ninth place. Uh, TJS Racing in tenth. Uh, Matthew Gallagher comes home in 11th place for WTF1's first team. And I think that's a pretty good result for Matthew. I think he's learned a lot today. His pace was pretty good. Uh, Whip, uh, Whiplash in 12th place, Team 35 in 13th place, then it was Team 114, Subby 3, Race Active 2, Team 30, HSS Racing, Team ILR1, uh, Castamard LOL in 20th, Subby 1, Team 23, WTF1's B Team in 23rd, Team 26, Team 31, Team 34, Team 32, Subby 2, 
Team 10 and Race Active 1 wrapping out the top 30. Team 33, 4Q Racing, Team 9, Team ILR2 and Exquisite wrapping out the 35 runners who finished the first ever WTF1 Grand Prix. There's your winner then, Jack Goldsmith with the chequered flag taking a lap of honour. And that was a very, very impressive drive. Not just in the racing, qualifying as well. Took pole position, bossed the start, took the lead. Had a big challenge from Piers Pryor and Ollie Wedden in the P&O Ferries cart. They tried a very interesting strategy, which on another day might have worked for the win of the race, but in the end, it's second place for them. And don't count out James Doherty's efforts as well. James Doherty, who drove so hard to pull in P&O Ferries in the middle of the race. A fantastic display from both of those drivers. Do keep your uh, comments coming in. Hello to Anthony Mays, who's thanking us for the stream and the commentary. Thank you very much, Anthony. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, like Alpha Live. And also we've got a page for the commentary as well, Double Dash Motorsport Media. So do like both of those pages. And of course, like the WTF1 Facebook page as well, if you don't already. And also to our viewers on YouTube as well, you can subscribe to WTF1. This is going to sound like I'm biased, but I'm not biased. Genuinely one of the best channels on, uh, on the YouTube uh, platform. I was having a watch of the video last night with Darren Turner with uh, Matt in the simulators down at base uh, base performance simulators very good watch so do subscribe for more content and i think that's uh that's about it for the racing i think we're going to try and get a, a couple of the drivers in the interview pen post race have a chat with them see how they found that one Matt's just walked back into the uh, into the media room here. He looks very, very warm. <laughs> Big round of applause from Lando Norris as well. Really, uh, really good drive that from Matthew. Eleventh place. Had some good battles along the way as well. I'm hoping in a moment that we'll have some highlights of the race as well to watch back. Hello to uh, Motor Nerve and Sage on YouTube. He said that was a fun race. It was a fun race. It flew by one hour round Buckmore Park. See the winners coming in as well. Jack Goldsmith and uh, James Doherty for Limitless Racing. What a fantastic job by them. Hello to Jason M, Jason 10K as well. He says, Grande Machina, a grazie ragazzi. Indeed. Could not have put it better myself. <laughs> Do stick about, folks. We have uh, got a few interviews coming up for you. Have a chat with some of the drivers and how they found that, uh, that one-hour endurance race around Bookmore Park. <laughs> True racer on YouTube. Yo, is Matt a pay driver? Well, I, I think that's a little harsh. And I think, uh, are we now good to pass over to Matt? We are going to be good to pass over to Matt. Matt's uh, got the race winners with him. Here we are, the winners. I'm uh, unfortunately not part of that. Uh, James and Jack, the winners of the inaugural WTF1 Grand Prix, obviously the biggest Grand Prix on the calendar for anyone. Uh, how does it feel? Yeah, it feels amazing. First of all, thank you for hosting the event. You're welcome. It's amazing. Um, not could have done it without this man. He's absolutely special. He's a beast around here. And yeah, it's just amazing to win the first one. Jack, you're a beast around here. Uh, how, do you, how do you take those comments? Take them lightly, I suppose. I mean, I've been racing around here for a good two and a half years now. I've been doing endurance racing for two years. And to be honest, it's just it's one of the best things I've done. And to be partnered up with James for this race. It's honestly a special moment for myself as well. Special moment. So first place doesn't go w 
No, you don't go away on hand, un, 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 untrophyable. I don't know what the word is. Do we have the trophy? We don't have the trophy. We'll have the trophy shortly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the Grand Prix itself as a whole, you know, we had the little pre-show, which I hope you guys enjoyed as well. And, and the race format, do, do you feel like with only two of you, because usually it was a three-man team, yeah. um, with two of you, was it very much uh, Jack carrying you, James? Or, or are you happy with uh, your performance as well? Yeah, I think I pretty much was backpacked the whole time. But yeah, I think the <laughs> format was absolutely amazing with the car seeing the cars go around here. I've never seen that. I've been going here for 20 years now and see it. An old F1 car around here is pretty amazing, and yeah, the format we had a strategy. We we're quite sweaty coming into this, so we had a bit of a strategy coming in mind. But hopefully, make it into a series in the future. I'd love to see that, and yeah, hopefully, back next year if you do. And I'm literally sweating. You were sweaty in the terms of yeah. practicing and, and whatnot. Um, and obviously, you're, you're wearing your Renault Renault Sport gear as well, being uh, one of the drivers for the eSports series. Obviously, uh, showing it off for the cameras, nice. Uh, and you've done pretty well by winning as well. Uh, Jack, what, what do you do, and what do you hope to do? Is there anything like racing-wise that you want to do? I would like to hopefully move into like endurance and cars, but it's just money dependent at the moment. My ultimate goal is to do the 24 hour Le Mans. Big push, but never give up. Nice. Uh, so we don't have a check, unfortunately. It is literally just a trophy. <laughs> uh, but that that is it. Is is that? Are we done? We're done. Oh my God, we're done. How is it already done? I was like. I woke up this morning so excited that the Grand Prix was going to happen. And now we're done. The WTF1 Grand Prix has finished. Thank you to Andrew over on the comms box. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, from all of us here at WTF1 and obviously these guys as well, the winners of the inaugural WTF1 Grand Prix, goodbye.